All right, everybody, welcome back for another ROM review. Let's go ahead and wipe everything twice. Once again, using Razor Recovery, which has a wipe all button. It's a lot easier than going through and wiping everything individually. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at Sapphire 2.0.2. The Sapphire uh, ROM is made by CVPCS. There are also ROMs Obsidian, uh, Emerald, and there's one other, Ruby, which run on the, I believe, Droid 2, Droid X, and Droid Incredible, not necessarily in that order. Uh, but CVPCS left developing the Sapphire, I'm just going to call it Sapphire, which includes all four ROMs. He left that project to work as a member of the Cyanogen mod team as the maintainer for the Droid 1. And because of that, this is a older ROM, probably came out two months ago. It is Froyo based, Android 2.2. But as far as stability goes, this is probably one of the most stable ROMs. CVPS, CVPCS's motto was something around um, don't modify Android if you don't have to. And so he added features that he felt were very important but wouldn't make drastic changes to the point where it didn't feel as much like Android anymore. It's taking a while to install. Actually that didn't take too long. Um, I also have to install Titanium Backup so I can restore some programs without logging into my market account and then going through syncing and all that fun stuff that no one really wants to see in a ROM review. So we're going to wait for this to boot up. Uh, the boot process started at 30 seconds on my watch. Wow, that was about a minute 15, maybe a minute 17. That was quick. Um, one thing I always do when I install a new ROM, first thing I do, remove the boot animation. Don't care how nice it looks, slows down the boot time significantly. Okay. We are going to start, as we always do, with going over the features of the ROM. That, of course, is usually located. Gem settings at the bottom. Now, you'll notice most people always put their settings, like Cyanogen Mod, Ultimate Droid, uh, Liquid Gingerbread, they all put them at the top. Gem settings all the way at the bottom here. Performance, you can enable Comcast. You can't set how much it is like most ROMs can, but you can still set it. Um... Set the minimum and maximum overclocking speed in the governor and tell it to set a boot. Various audio enhancements. Uh, when you should display lock screen controls. Let's do always. User interface tweaks. You can change different colors in the status bar. Though all this, I believe, requires a reboot. The Galaxy S Power Widget. This is the completely created by CVPCS power widget mod and it was of course ported over to cyanogen mod and you can rearrange the order there but this was the original implementation from what I know all of these except spare parts and dev tools, those are built in Android things. But all of these uh, features were created by CVPCS himself and then adopted into Cyanogen Mod as opposed to the other way around. Usually most ROMs get their source from Cyanogen Mod, they copy their vendor configuration, they copy a lot of the mods that they have that are included in Cyanogen Mod, while this one CVPCS did everything himself. He's a great coder. Everything he does is smooth. Works out nicely. You can definitely tell it's Froyo. Um, you got the very white theme, vanilla theme, as opposed to the darker grays that you see in Gingerbread. Anyways, that's about all the features you got in this one. Again, he didn't want to modify Android if he didn't have to. So now we are going to go restore the four programs we normally do, which is set CPU, Linpack, Quadrant, and Root Explorer. Now we'll 
Alright, let's start up set CPU, automatically detect speeds, then give it permissions once it asks. We're going to set the stock kernel to 600 megahertz as always. 600 megahertz, oh good, it is an option. Don't know what I would have done there. Interactive. Alright, let's turn on airplane mode. So Linpack doesn't load its ads, which no one likes to see. Let's run the first benchmark. Now the first benchmark is usually off. Not much you can do about that. Um, but we should expect something in the 8.6 to 8.9 range. There's 8.66. Now this next one should be higher, probably like 8.7, 8.8. 8.7, 8.8. Almost the exact same score as the last run. There's an 8.781. Now these speeds are not stacking up to some of the gingerbread builds that we were running. There's 8.81. Even with that good finish... It wasn't as fast as CyanogenMod. 8.81 was CyanogenMod's first score. And their last score was an 8.9. They even had an 8.92 at one point. Let's run it again let it sit. There we go. Uh, Sapphire's Limpack scores were slower than every gingerbread ROM, and a little slower than my UI, which was also a Froyo. For the first Quadrant run, CyanogenMod got, CyanogenMod 7, gingerbread based, uh, got 704. I'm gonna expect a little lower than that, maybe 680. Though I know CVPCS did make his own custom Sapphire kernels which I would flash his kernels onto every other Froyo ROM that I was using at the time when I would change over ROMs. They always seem to be the smoothest, they'd run the coolest. So maybe that will give him a decently high score. Gotta take airplane mode out, or turn it off, wait for 3G to restore, then I can proceed. There we go. 780. Wow. That, I believe, is the highest I have seen out of any ROM for that speed. Very impressive. Let's well, reboot into recovery. They have a different reboot into recovery interface that uh, most other ROMs you see have. It still has to vibrate when it turns off. I don't much like that. Most of the ROMs have that removed. Alright, it's been a few minutes. We're going to not cool. Put it to 800 megahertz. Go back into airplane mode. And launch Linpack. We should expect around 11.3 to 11.6 for most of these scores. 11.5, that's pretty good for a first run. There's 11.4, went down, that's not normal. Usually they go up as you run the benchmark more than once. 11.48 again, hmm. Hope this one will be higher. 11.6. Well, it's not too surprising that those scores weren't as high as what I've seen before, because with the standard 600 megahertz kernel, they were also a little lower than some of the other ROMs, which could probably just be because it's running Android Froyo instead of Gingerbread. Usually on this, we're going to average between 850 to 920. Well, let's see what we get. On the 600 megahertz quadrant benchmark with Sapphire, I got the highest score by a long shot that I've seen at 600 megahertz. So we might be able to expect a Fairly high score on this too. Maybe around 950. We'll see. Turn off airplane mode. Wait for 3G to restore again. Eight hundred and five. That is only twenty-five higher when the clock speed went up thirty-three percent. Don't know what to make of that besides CVPCS has a nice kernel. Um, anyways, we're going to go into the ratings now. For features, 
It doesn't have that many, although all of them that it does have are very good, they're well programmed. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. For benchmarks, <laughs> with the standard kernel they're good. Let's give it like a, a 7. But with RAID 0's kernel it wasn't impressive at all. So we're going to have to give it around a 6 for that. Um, though it's smooth, you're never going to encounter a bug with this ROM. It's I want to say it's perfect as far as coding. Of course it's not, but it's very stable. Very, very stable. Um, it's Android 2.2.1 based, I believe. 2.2.1, which means it doesn't have the uh, MMS fix. Uh, Google that if you don't know what that is. It's where sometimes you would send a text to a different person than you meant to send it to. And Android wouldn't notify you. You would have no idea until that person responded wondering what's going on. Uh, overall, just because of how stable this ROM is, I want to give it an 8 out of 10 for an overall score. If you're looking for an everyday ROM that won't fail on you, that'll give you good battery life and everything you'd expect from an Android device, Sapphire 2.02 .02 is a good one to go with. Hope you enjoyed this. Goodbye.